own a 3D printer, you've probably been asked by friends or family to print something for them that they've found online. But every time someone asks me to print something for them, I assume the worst. Luckily, the request I just received is for something quite basic. A work colleague has asked for some motor shoes for his ZMR 250 quadcopter. He also supplied the link to Thingiverse. Here it is, and take a look at how we're supposed to print these things, standing upright with quite an overhang. He requested uh, this file here, under Thing Files. So let's download this and open it up in Cura. In Cura, let's click Load, click the ZMR 250 STL file we just downloaded, and open it up. And as you can see, it's deposited on the build platform standing upright. Now obviously we're not going to print it like this, so the first thing we want to do is rotate it. So click on the part, we'll choose Rotate, and we want to rotate in this direction here, so I'll click this circle and drag that around until that flat piece is parallel with the build platform. That's pretty close. Now, as you can see it's still not flat on the build platform so we might need to rotate it once more. Let's do that. Okay, much better. That's now flat on the build platform. Perfect. Now he's not going to want just one of these, he's going to want four of them. So let's right click on this part, click multiply object, and we want another three. So let's increase the number of copies by three. As you can see, Cura deposits them in this fashion here, but I'd prefer to have all four in a square. So let's move this one over to here and this one over to say there. That's much better. That's going to be much easier to print with the print head not having to move so far on the build platform. Okay, now that we have our parts on the build platform, let's have a look at the quality preferences that we can choose. Um, the layer height that I have here is 0.3 millimeters, so this is the, the quality. I think that's a bit low for these parts, especially as I'm giving these to someone who doesn't currently own a 3D printer, you kind of want to show off the capabilities of your printer, so let's increase the resolution to say 0.2 millimeters. Now when it comes to shell thickness, so this is the number of perimeters, at the moment being 0.8, that's two perimeters. Uh, looking at this design though, there isn't much of an infill, it's, everything's quite thin to start off with, so we can probably leave it at 0.8 and it will mainly be perimeters anyway. The bottom and top thickness, again, uh, I have here 0.4 millimeters. There isn't much of a bottom or top with these things. Um, there, there's, there's, there is a, a, a bottom here, but there's, there's basically no top. And I don't think that's going to really make much of a difference. So I'll leave that as 0.4. With the fill density, this is something that will probably crank up because he's putting this on his quadcopter and these are going to get absolutely thrashed. We do want to have them I guess solid would be probably the best way. So let's increase the fill density to 100. As you can see, the estimated time and the weight is being updated. So it'll take uh, just under two hours to print and this entire set of four will weigh 21 grams. Looking down at the print speed and temperature, print speed 50 millimeters a second yeah that I think that'll be quite quite fine here any any faster than 50 at least for my 3d printer and that starts to degrade the quality printing temperature now we are printing with ABS so I'm going to crank up this temperature from 220 to 230 degrees Celsius bed temperature again we're printing in ABS so ABS tends to warp if it's not hot so we want to have this as hot as possible I'll crank this up to 90 degrees Celsius we don't need any support here, I believe. Um, there is a decent flat surface here. Okay, there's quite a bit of overhang. But um, just going back to the ZMR uh, website on Thingiverse, this gentleman here, he doesn't have any support. So looks like he does have a brim though. So let's, let's copy that in Cura. So platform adhesion type is brim and we want to set the brim settings, brim line width amount. Let's see what 20 does. I'll hit OK on that. 
Uh, and before we go further, let's check out and see what the print moves are going to be with that width of brim. And as you can see, that's that's the brim that it's going to create around the piece. And I think that's that's quite decent. That should that should support that part quite well while it's printing. Let's choose the view mode back to normal. The diameter, the filament I'm using is 1.7 millimeters and the flow density being 100 as well. Now the other tab that we need to make some changes to is the advanced tab. Uh, the nozzle size doesn't change, so I'm sticking with 0.4. These are my retraction settings for my Bowden extruder system. So 150 millimeter speed is going to retract over three millimeter distance. I'll leave the initial layer thickness at um, uh, 0.2, leave the initial layer line width to 100. Basically everything there can stay default. Uh, all the speeds, I, I don't really change these speeds anymore, so I'll leave these all as default. Uh, and lastly, the minimum layer time, so the minimum layer time that it's going to aim for is 10 seconds, which 10 seconds is, is it's easily going to attain that because we're printing four of these. If we're only printing one, I think the minimum layer time would kick in and it would slow down the print. And lastly, this enable cooling fan, we want to uncheck that because we are printing in ABS and if we're blowing air over the part, there's a, a very good chance that it may cool down the part to the point that it'll want to bow and just pop off the build platform. So we'll leave that unchecked. Okay, I think we're good to go here. I'll click on File, Save G-Code and let's save it in that directory. Here we are in Prontoface. The first thing we'll do is click Load File and we want to load our G-code file that we exported or saved from Cura. We'll click Open on that. The first thing Prontoface does is it displays each layer, how it will be printed on the build platform uh, in front of us here. And as you can see, it's still loading. It's quite a complex uh, set of moves, so it takes a little while to load. And there we go, it's just finished. Uh, some, of, some more information that we can see here is on the right hand side we have estimated duration, total of 197 layers and approximately 1 hour 25 minutes to complete. I know this is a bit um, optimistic, it'll take probably closer to what Cura estimated at about 1 hour and 45 minutes. Um, we can click on this part here and this will bring up a new window, so here we can actually scroll uh, from layer 0 all the way up to layer 197 and just see layer by layer how Prontoface uh, will instruct the printer to print this. Um, a useful information here on the bottom left is this layer 1. So if we move up to the very first layer we have 0.2 millimeters because we are printing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height and you'll see as we scroll up each layer it increments by 0.2 millimeters, so 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and so on. Let's expand this, scroll that across and zoom in. Now if we start at layer 0 again, so the very first very first layer will be I guess layer, layer 1 uh, at 0.2 millimeters, we can see it's going to print this quite a large brim. This is what we set up in Cura. And as we scroll up to the very next layer, the brim is now gone. It's now printing just the, the printed part. And as you can see, the printed part is also solid because we chose a 100% infill. And this is something I do before I print anything really through Prontoface, is I just scroll up the layers and just check to make sure that nothing looks like an impossible print, like it's not going to print in thin air, so to speak. But everything here looks like it's being supported from the previous layer. So I'm happy with that. I'll close that window. I'll go ahead and click connect and that'll connect to my 3D printer, which it just has. And to print, we can just hit print.
So let's see if I can simply pull these off the platform. I'll wiggle this one a bit. It is moving a bit. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay. Easy one. Let's do the same with this one. Wiggle it around. Too easy. Third one. And fourth one. Now we just need to take the brim off these parts. So let's see if I can simply tear it off using my hands. And it seems to be coming off very easily. Fantastic. Look at that. Beautiful. Taking a closer look at these parts, even though each of these are identical, because the slicing program started each layer from each part at a different location, and also because the layer changed happened at different locations, we can see um, different lumps or ripples where the layer changes did actually occur. So on the rear of this one, you can see it's a little bit, uh, a little bit messy, but on the rear of this one, it is perfectly clean. And if we look at the other part of one of these parts, here we go. So along the side here, it's a bit messy on this one, but over here, it's perfectly smooth. So they are the differences between where the print head entered, uh, changed lanes, uh, lanes, changed uh, layers, and uh, exited each part. So all in all, I'm quite happy with the finish of these parts. Being ABS, you know, they are quite strong and should have enough flex um, for a situation like a quadcopter, so they don't just break on the very first impact, they'll, uh, they'll stress initially. Uh, the finish is quite good as well. Now, I did print these at 50 millimeters a second, so I wasn't expecting uh, the absolute best quality that I could get, and it shows with all these ripples you can see from the layer change, uh, that's um, bouncing occurring probably from the belts um, as it's moving from one direction to the next. Um, it did take two hours to complete all these pieces, so that was a longer print time than the estimated uh, one hour 25 that uh, Pronterface thought and one hour 45 that uh, Cura um, estimated. And the reason for that is I have the uh, default acceleration on the X and Y axis on my printer set quite conservatively. I have them down at 800 millimeters a second because uh, at higher speeds, as you can see with these ripples, that is exacerbated, that is way worse if the acceleration is uh, any higher than that. And for our final test, Cura predicted that these parts would weigh about 20 grams all up. Now, I'm not sure if that weight estimation is for a PLA plastic as opposed to an ABS, because ABS is a little bit lighter than PLA. Uh, but either way, the, here are some scales that I've been using in previous videos, and here is a um, calibration weight. This one's 20 grams, so let's see how accurate these scales are. Bang on 20 grams. Okay, well, I'm pretty confident now that whatever these weigh will be pretty close. So one is four grams. Okay, so we're going to be looking at about 16 grams for all four. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time.